Greetings, adventurous viewers. Today, we will meet nine individuals from around the world. They include a scientist, former slaughterhouse worker, a chef, a minister, artist, and athletes. Despite being from all walks of life and cultures, they have one thing in common. At a certain point in life, they change their diet. And in so doing, they change their lives, their families' lives, and the world around them. Be prepared to be inspired by their fascinating and honest real-life stories. As a youth, Carl Scott of New Zealand worked in an egg factory farm and later in a sheep slaughterhouse. But in his 30s, he decided never to harm a living animal ever again. I started my first job there on day one was the gut trays. The sheep's guts come past on this big conveyor full of stainless steel trays with bits of dead sheep in it and I had to sort them and process them and drop them down stainless steel chutes. It was kind of gross and kind of ghastly, but after two or three days, you just sort of stop thinking about it. You just switch off. You don't think about it anymore. Soul destroying is the way I would describe the work. I was sort of lost in my life and directionless, and I sent a prayer to the universe. I sort of addressed anyone who's up there who's willing to listen and willing to help me. I could use some guidance, please. I believed that if I was sincere asking for help, I would get it. And then I went to a talk by a spiritual guru. He was a Hare Krishna man, and it was a really interesting talk. He challenged me, he said, will you renounce meat eating, give up meat eating? I looked back at him, looked him in the eye, and I said, actually, I'm not prepared to do that at this point in my life. He was surprised, but he respected that. It was that night, or, or the next night, I had a dream. It was a very profound dream. It was like I was talking to Jesus or the Buddha or some holy figure. And I don't remember what the conversation was, but just before we, I woke up, I, I looked at them and I said, I'm going to become vegan. And I burst into tears. And it just, this feeling come over me, this is in the dream still, this just feels so right. And then I woke up, whoa. And it was like I just knew Oh, that's my answer. <laughs> and I so didn't expect that. I thought the universe would tell me, write a book, go traveling, whatever. I did not expect go vegan, but that was my answer. Although most of us do not have to be directly involved in killing animals, we perhaps experience the same kind of disconnect from the violence when we consume meat. Nexilia Nova of Byron Bay, Australia, has been a vegetarian for 60 years. I really loved animals. I had a little dog to myself, and one of my uncles used to make these meals. One evening, he asked me to help him get to the little rabbits in the hatchet that he kept, and I would feed them and grow very fond and gave them names and so forth. And so he, this evening he said, come and we get the rabbit. And I thought, we'll just take the little rabbit to play with. And he said, you hold his hind legs. And I said, that will hurt him. He says, not for very long. Oh. And that sounded really ominous. So I held it and then I saw that he was aiming at this poor little thing with his gun. And I just dropped it and ran and upstairs and cried all the way. And of course, it was no use. The poor little thing was caught and it was our meal the next day. The thing is that when you're a child, you're just offered something on your plate and you somehow don't connect it. And only later on, when I saw there were whole carcasses hanging in the butcheries, uh, with blood on the floor. I've never seen that, and that really clinched it. Dr. Jonathan Balcombe's career as a leading behavioral research scientist and best-selling author on the sentience of animals goes back to the tender age of four, to be exact, when he encountered a female hippo named Nadia. They used to toss a big cabbage into her mouth and she would chomp the cabbage. And she just so enjoyed it. She anticipated it, she waited for it, and then she really, really got into it. 
And that made me connect to that hippo. It made me connect to animals. And it's through the animal connection that I eventually decided I needed to stop eating animals. But it was 20 years ago that I made that decision, and I'm very glad I did. And today I'm a happy vegan, and I feel very much at peace with the planet and with my relationship with other animals. Mr. Terry Flores of the USA was running a mechanic shop when an incredible spiritual experience presented him with a new calling to be a vegan minister, encouraging others to heal themselves and always through a veg diet. I'm Christian, 33 years. I never had thought that uh, he would come to me the way he did. The first time I heard his voice was actually in my computer room and um, he called up my name Terry and I'm like, I'm looking around and I'm like, what is that? Well, so my day started going through and the Bible says love thy neighbor. So I'm barbecuing for all my neighbors, ribs, and chicken. And you know, I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, you know, for this food. And next thing you know, I hear his voice again. And he says, shall my creation suffer and die just so you can eat? And I'm like, I'm like, Lord, is that you? I said, man, that's the Lord's voice again. Next thing you know, I run in the house and my wife's like, what's going on? I said, I just heard a voice. I know that's the Lord's voice. She goes, well, you know, New Testament says that you can eat certain meats, just pray for it and bless it. I said, Ali, but if we're not blessing God's creatures and we're killing them, we're cursing them. I opened up the refrigerator and threw all the meat in the trash. I got rid of it all, threw the eggs out and I know nothing about vegetarian. I said, but if that was God's voice, I'd rather obey God than obey man. The scripture said, thou shalt not kill. You know, and I started going and reading all the Bible. And I said, Lord, show me. If this is your voice, I know what's in here. Show me. So Genesis 129, it says, Behold, Adam, I give you all the fruit-bearing trees of the land. And every tree that yields seed where yields fruit thereof shall be your meat. And I'm like, wow. I said, this is the day in the beginning. And I'm like, 33 years. I've been going to, you know, church. I learned a lot of scriptures. You know, and but... How could I miss out on the very diet from the beginning? You know, and, and that's where it started. For Mr. Dale West, who with his wife Elaine runs the Ruderville Vegan Animal Sanctuary in Florida, USA, veganism expresses compassion, not only for animals, but also for humans. The reason? Meat-related diseases destroy the lives of millions of loved ones every year. My father passed away from heart disease, and it was a terrible ordeal. About 10 days later, my grandfather passed away of lung cancer. Those were my two best friends in my entire life. I lost them, and I was heartbroken. About three days after that happened, I had to call rescue to go to the emergency room. I thought I was having a heart attack. Turned out I was having a reaction to the diet, which I had been on for about 10 years. I later found out that I had had a heart attack prior to that event. About 10 days after that, I met Elaine and began a relationship. The day of the first date, after talking to Elaine for about three hours, I became a vegetarian. About a month later, I decided to become a vegan after she had told me about all the horror stories of factory farming and what indeed happens to the animals that we decide to eat. There really is no alternative to being a vegan. What is the choice? To me, there is no choice. As soon as one finds out about the atrocities and the evil behind factory farming, there really is no choice. My whole world's changed, and I feel happier, and I feel really grateful and inspired. Because I love them and I care about them. It changed my life when I'm healthier. It actually benefits the entire planet. We now know that animal agriculture is the biggest contributor to climate change. They feel as we feel, and it's not good for the human soul, but for the world, for us to mistreat them. Shakamuni Buddha, Jesus Christ, St. Francis of Assisi, Leonardo da Vinci, Shania Twain, Leo Tolstoy, Albert Einstein, Alicia Silverstone, Toby McGuire, 
Joaquin Phoenix, Pamela Anderson, and Natalie Portman. What do these distinguished people of the past and present have in common? They represent the circle of vegetarian and vegan elite and some of the most gifted and accomplished people in the world.
of us to speak up for the animals. They have no voice. And there are terribly, horrifically cruel things being done to them on a daily basis that are absolutely unnecessary and that are also very bad for human health. I think we're at the cusp of a huge revolution in eating, and people are really starting to wake up to the cruelty in factory farming. If a deer ran out in the road when you're driving, you'd swerve to avoid it because right. you don't want to hit the deer, but yet you would eat a cow. It, I think it really is fundamentally unnatural. We are vegan, as you would be if you went and saw what happens to animals when they are prepared for food. It is absolutely should be against the law. It's just the most heartbreaking thing in the world. So no one should be eating animals. Everyone should be saving and rescuing animals instead. And vegan food is delicious on top of that. I am vegan because it's the healthiest way to eat. So uh, I'm vegan. You should be. They are some of the countless noble examples of compassion and wisdom. So keep in good company with the noble circle of vegetarian and vegan elite. Na used to be chef at a five-star hotel in Bangkok, Thailand. Just six months ago, she moved to Melbourne, Australia, where she became a vegan chef at Loving Hut Vegan Restaurant. Na's fine vegan dishes are very popular among the customers. In Thailand, I cook meat, and when I come here in Australia to work with Loving Heart, I have to create a new Thai dish to become vegan food, to make it uh, yummy. I eat uh, everyday vegan food. Does it inspire me? I used to have uh, like a allergy from seafood now it's no problem because of be vegan no need any more product anymore you just change uh, to add more uh, veggie or bean or tofu even fruit you can put in your food also that is a lot of fun to create everyone can do it many talented people around us are veg in china charming singer gu kai has countless fans. His compassionate diet is another reason to love him more. Uh, this is Lenjiho, 2011. Die Beweggründe, Vegetarier zu werden, waren rein ethische Beweggründe. Ich äh, mache den Strongman-Sport seit sechs Jahren, also in der Zeit sozusagen, wo ich umgestellt habe, äh, die Ernährung habe ich auch angefangen, Strongman zu machen. Da habe ich jetzt dieses Jahr sozusagen den höchsten Titel geholt, den man in sich in Deutschland holen kann und bin damit stärkster Mann Deutschlands. Ähm, es ist wesentlich leichter zuzunehmen, wenn man äh, seinen Verdauungstrakt einfach nicht mit Fleisch belastet, sondern ähm, dadurch, dass man das Fleisch weglässt, der Verdauung sehr, sehr viel Arbeit abnimmt und dementsprechend äh, wesentlich mehr von den Sachen essen kann, die dann auch für den Körper besser sind. Es war auch so, dass ich am Anfang, als ich mit dem Sport angefangen habe, äh, sehr viel Gelächter auf mich gezogen habe. Allerdings, gut, äh, 
mittlerweile bin ich derjenige, der lacht. <lacht> Seitdem ich diesen etwas markanten Titel geholt habe, des stärksten Manns Deutschlands, ähm, ist es so, dass ich sehr, sehr viel Feedback bekommen habe von anderen, äh, die eben in mir auch äh, ein gewisses Vorbild sehen. Und ich kann sagen, dass ich so an die, also ein gutes Dutzend an Athleten zusammen habe, die mir das nachmachen. Next, Mr. Hordorf Simeone, a gifted French choreographer, artist and director, shares about the spiritual benefits to him and his family from being vegan. Je me suis senti tout de suite mieux dans mon corps. Je me suis senti voilà un peu plus élevé, un peu moins dans la terre, un peu plus élevé et spirituellement et euh, et vraiment me rapprocher du ciel. Et euh, et puis euh, un peu plus tard, j'ai décidé d'aller un petit peu plus loin et d'arrêter euh, tout, tout ce qui venait de l'animal, donc tout ce qui était laitage. Et euh, alors que j'étais un passionné de fromage et de laitage, que j'aimais beaucoup, et, euh, mais j'ai beaucoup lu, je me suis beaucoup renseigné, j'ai vraiment pris conscience et j'ai réalisé à quel point, euh, d'une part, c'était néfaste pour, pour nous, euh, en tant qu'être humain, que c'était pas du tout bon pour notre corps, pour notre mental, et puis que par rapport aux animaux, c'était encore quelque chose où il y avait de la souffrance. J'ai arrêté ça, je me suis marié, j'ai trois enfants aujourd'hui, donc mes enfants sont véganes aussi et c'est quelque chose qui est avec lequel euh, on est très bien. Les enfants sont suivis par un pédiatre euh, qui est totalement et 100% d'accord avec nous sur ce chemin-là, avec lequel euh, nous, nous ne sommes jamais malades, <rire> nous ne prenons jamais médicaments, euh, on est toujours en très bonne santé et, euh, et, et voilà, euh, c'est quelque chose qui nous qui nous permet, je dirais, de, de se sentir euh, plus proche de la nature, plus proche des animaux, euh, plus proche du ciel aussi. C'est la même vie dans tous nous, et ça fait ça tellement beautiful parce que la minute où nous entrons dans ce plus profond feeling de cette vie, then we can see that there is just a one. In the beginning, I sat all my kids down at the table. I said, Daddy wants to tell you guys I'm sorry. And they're like, what did you do, Daddy? What did you do? I said, well, Daddy raised you guys wrong. And uh, I want to say I'm sorry, because um, killing animals is bad. And they're like, it is. I said, they cry, don't they? They said, yes, they cry. Don't... Yes, they cry. I said, well, see, Daddy, you know, didn't really realize that at the beginning. But now Daddy knows that it's not fair to the animals. They want to live like us. And they said, yeah, you know, they started getting teary-eyed. And I said, I said, that's why we got to love, kids. I said, we need to love all of what God creates, you know. And they're like, okay, you know. And from that day on, you know, we, um, we had a... I'm sorry. We changed our diet. I said, Lord, you know, thank you, you know, from that day on, you know, I didn't have a problem with my children no more, you know. They were, uh, they were led by a spirit. What can I say? My daughter, who is now pregnant, is a vegan and will have a vegan child. My other two children are almost vegans. It's exciting to see people's lives change. I have helped many employees become vegans. I have seen them lose hundreds of pounds. It is very gratifying to know that I have the uh, opportunity to share this important lifestyle change with others. It not only affects one's personal health, but also the health of your family, your friends, the sustainability of our planet, and to help eliminate the atrocities that are going on throughout the world. If you not eat anymore, does it mean no killing? Does it good for your soul. 100% you're going to feel very good inside of you. Ich möchte einfach an all diejenigen, die für sich entscheiden, dass sie etwas tun wollen, um etwas in der Welt zu verändern, den möchte ich einfach sagen, jeder Regen beginnt mit einem einzigen Tropfen. I'm Patrick Babumian, Germany's strongest man, and I have a strong message for you. Be veg, go green to save the planet.
we sincerely thank all our guests for sharing their personal stories of how they changed to the plant-based diet of joy, well-being, and love. As Supreme Master Ching Hai has often said, as during this 2009 video conference in Germany, the positive energy generated from living the vegan lifestyle brings us all into an era of immense happiness. Your life will change. Your thinking will change. The whole being will change. Believe me, I know it because I've done it. You will change completely. You will love yourself more. You will have more self-respect and you'll be glad that you walk the noble way of compassionate vegan diet. Because the vegan lifestyle carries such a powerful energy, all positive, all loving, all constructive, all blessing, all intelligence, that could melt all the negative energy away, destroy it forever, and neutralize the destructive forces in our environment and in our lives in the shortest time that you could imagine. And then replace them with constructive energy and peaceful vibrations. We will live in beauty and health and so much joy. The whole atmosphere will be brimming with happiness like a real paradise. important to eat the healthiest you can if you know what's healthiest for you. It's obviously a non-animal diet, so. The, if you love animals, the first thing you should do is stop eating them, not the last thing. You know, the old paradigm, we are what we eat. I stopped eating meat seven years ago. It felt really good. You should try exploring more vegetarian options, too. Shakamuni Buddha. Jesus Christ, St. Francis of Assisi, Leonardo da Vinci, Shania Twain, Leo Tolstoy, Albert Einstein, Alicia Silverstone, Toby McGuire, Joaquin Phoenix, Pamela Anderson, and Natalie Portman. What do these distinguished people of the past and present have in common? They represent the circle of vegetarian and vegan elite and some of the most gifted and accomplished people in the world.